So in this video, we're gonna go through my single stand design that I have for my YouTube studio. Now this is like a all in one package. I've been thinking I've been wanting to do something like this for a little while, just because I like the simplicity of having everything on one stand. And I've seen Caleb from DSLR Video Shooter do similar builds on his channel. However, this product kind of just got suggested to me on Amazon. It's called the Viozen Selfie Stand Setup. Because apparently that's all we do is selfies all day. But what this stand is, is an all-in-one. It's got four arms and it's supposed to be able to hold your camera, your laptop, your audio, your lighting, all of the different things. However, it, out of the box, it's not perfect. And so I wanna go through the different modifications that I did to the setup to make it work for the cameras that I shoot on. Right now I'm shooting on the Sony a7C. I have the a7S Mark III right here with really nice full frame, prime, cine prime, I was actually just out in the desert with my buddy Justin McBride. He's got an overlanding channel and we just did a four day, 650 mile trek from Salt Lake City to Tahoe all on dirt. And I shot the majority of it on these primes. I'm gonna do another video about that in the future. And this whole setup, this was like my cinema setup. I got the Polar Pro Indie filter matte box on the front, which I'm actually pretty impressed by that. A7S Mark III, which is a solid camera, and these DZO Film Vespid Primes. It's pretty fun. But let's talk about this selfie stand. I'm gonna have to pull this stand out and we'll just do it here in the middle. And I'm gonna pull everything off and I wanna show you what all the components are and what they do. And then I'll show you where the modifications are that I made to be able to make this work for a different style of camera setup. So let's, here, let's get this going. So let me just show you what comes with this Fiozen Selfie Live Floor Stand, five in one, 10 inch LED microphone, blah, 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 blah. It's basically this stand and you have the rolly wheels at the bottom, you have four arms. Now on those arms, you have a laptop plate, you can get a phone holder for your camera or a tablet holder. It comes with a 10 inch ring light and then you have a boom arm for your microphone. And all of this comes in the package for $223. Okay, so right off the bat, you can see that I'm pulling this out and it's trying to tip. And on its own, when you start putting heavy equipment on this thing, it actually is, puts it off balance. So I have to use two 35 pound sandbags. Sandbags are your best friend. So as I strip this down, we're gonna talk about each of the components that I put on here and what they replaced. So let's just start with the light because it's the big bright thing right here. So I use the Aperture 120D Mark II. It just happens to be the one that I have. Now the light is not as important as how your light is controlled. What I mean by that is the softbox. So I have the smaller of the softboxes that Aperture makes because of the space in this room. Like if I had a bigger studio, then I might go for the bigger softbox because it creates a better fall off on face when you have a bigger source. With the softbox, I don't just leave it the normal face, the soft glowing face. I put the egg crate on. Now the egg crate directs the light in a specific direction. So right here, I'm not getting the light from this light, like my light's coming from over there. The, this light, when you put the egg crate on it, it only throws light in a specific direction and it's soft light, so it's gonna look good for a face. So you're not gonna get a ton of spill on all the walls and everything around. So these are kind of the two components that I want on this light. Now it came with a ring light, 10 inch ring light, and ring lights are, I mean, some people like ring lights. I'm not gonna use a ring light. Like it's gonna really just make your face glow. You can't sculpt it in any way. It just blasts light, makes everything look bright, which some of you might actually like that look and you might keep the ring light on here but I took it off and I just used a little attachment that goes from the screw that comes on the arm to a pin that then goes into the aperture. You basically need these two pieces to be able to attach any sort of light that would go on a normal light stand on this setup. This light isn't necessarily the best option for this. I think it works great, but if you had a skinnier light, something like a light panel, like one of those just soft, 
flat panels. Falcon Eyes makes a bunch of them. Then this would be a much sleeker design where your light can kind of be tucked back and away. I prefer these lights. These are just what I work with and these are what I have. So I made it work with the apertures. Moving right along. So we have the audio. This comes with an audio boom pole and then it's just got a threaded in which you could put on basically any microphone mount. I have a Sennheiser shotgun mic. I just really like this style of microphone. It's a shorter shotgun mic. And so what that does is it only picks up audio in like a little area where you're shooting versus like if you had a super long shotgun mic, that's gonna pick up audio like in the distance. The idea when you're using a shotgun mic is you wanna have a microphone that's gonna pick up the best audio for the situation. And so when I'm sitting at my desk, I don't need to have a long throw. So I need to have a shorty, little short microphone here that picks up basically the audio right in the space that I'm working. And that's how you get that clean, really crisp sounding audio. Now I just have an XLR running down this arm and it goes to a zoom. The reason is I don't have the XLR attachment for the Sony right now. So there is an XLR attachment that goes into the top of the camera and that's what I'm gonna use once I can get one, but they're all back ordered. So for now I have the zoom and I have this tied on with a little clamp. So these little clamps will work great to just add anything to the stand. So I have four arms, but I have five objects. So I use this just as an additional thing to add on. And you know, these clamps, depending on if you wanna add other things onto the stand, is a great way to just add extra stuff. One thing I've done is I have Velcro and that helps me tie up the cables all over this. So wherever I have cables running, I use Velcro and just tie it to the arms. Now, one other thing when it comes to cable management is I'm using this kind of like sheafing, this stuff. It's pretty nice because what it does is you can put a bunch of cables through it. It's soft and bendable, but it opens up. So you can put a bunch of different cables in here and basically clean everything up. I use this all over my office. This is super useful stuff and it's not plasticky. So there are hard plastic versions of these cable management. This one is super soft and bendable. So I prefer this style. I cut up a bunch of these pieces and just fit them to the different spots on this stand. Now camera wise, as I said, I have the A7C. Now I put the prime on here because the lens I'm using is right here. I use the 20 millimeter 1.8 from Sony and I put it on the A7C and that is my main camera. Now the reason that I use the A7C for this setup is that it's got fast autofocus, easy to put on the system, and it was cheaper than buying a second A7S Mark III. A7S Mark III is my main go-to camera now, so the A7C is a great companion to that for my studio stuff. Also, photo-wise, this has a more megapixels, so if I ever need a photo camera that I need more megapixels, I typically will pull this camera out. They, both the cameras look great and they work well together, so I think this is a good little studio camera especially because I'm not using the monitor on the camera, I'm using this monitor to view what I'm doing here in the studio. Now, one more thing before we go to the monitor though, I wanna show you what I did here. So this arm comes with a phone or tablet attachment that goes on the end here. Basically these arms, all of them except for this microphone one, I have a screw that pops out. It's a quarter 20 screw. It's what you typically find on camera gear. But instead of using the phone tablet mount, because I'm not gonna use that to shoot with, I just put a Joby ball head on here. And this Joby ball head just goes right on to the screw that's already on this arm. This makes it so that I can move the camera in any direction, level it out, be able to put all of my camera plates on here and just pop it off. So this camera can become more mobile. So if I need to use it, I pop it off, I go shoot with it, I bring it back in the studio, just stick it on. I'm good to go. Now also with this, I have my HDMI cable that runs down the arm into the monitor. And there is some cable management that comes with these arms. It's just these little plastic pieces. It's not the best. That's why I'm also using some Velcro and some of this other stuff to be able to keep cables nice and tight on this setup. Okay, so this is the monitor that I'm using. And the monitor mount that comes with this system allows you to shift in all directions. So back here, I can adjust it so that it goes flat this way, straight down, left and right, like it can move all over. And the reason is this is set up for a laptop. So this actually isn't built for a monitor, but it's for a laptop 
that basically you could set in here, have your keyboard like this, and then your monitor here. I guess it's for like live streaming and things like that. Now, the beauty is I have a 13 inch production monitor. This one isn't the best in the world. It actually doesn't take the 4K signal out of the Sony cameras, so I have to dumb it down to 1080 to use it, but it still works great to see my image and just make sure that I'm in focus and see lighting and things like that. How this is on here is it's just clamped on and you can see that this mount is a laptop mount. So you got a little ledge down here to hold it and you have these two clamps on the side. Now, this production monitor is the exact size of a 13 inch laptop. So for me, this works great. Like these hold the monitor in place so that I don't have to like screw anything in. I just pop this in and it's good to go. So I didn't really have to make any major modifications to this to be able to hold a monitor. All right, a little intermission here. Jay, you wanna show him your bunny? Show him your bunny. This is her new best friend. Oh, she's learned to drop things. You wanna grab it? Oh, she's like playing the crane game. Gotta get back to the video, Jay. So this is the full setup with nothing on it. You have the four arms, the column and the base. Now at the top, you have two arms that are connected on the same level. And this can basically be used for one is your light and the other is for audio. And this goes on the top. Now, all of these can change how high or how low you want to make them. So you can just unscrew a little knob and then you can push down or you can bring it up. Now going down the column here, you have these two other arms and basically there's a track. Now these arms move freely. So these you could pop off, but you have these locks and these locks basically go in a track and you can set them at whatever height you want. So you put these down in the track you put your arm on, set it at the height that you want. Then if you want it lower, you just have to adjust this, bring it down. And now you can have the arm lower. So these two bottom arms, you can adjust them at any height up and down to make sense for your setup. Now last, we have to talk about the base. So down at the bottom, there's a circular base and on the circular base, there's four wheels. Now those wheels make it so that you can slide this around, especially if you have a hardwood floor. I have carpet, so it's a little bit harder to roll. They're smaller wheels, but it's a circular base and it's heavy. So it could actually hold a decent amount of weight on top of this whole setup. The issue is I have a heavier light. I have a little bit heavier gear so that when I put everything on there and I extend the arms in one direction, it does start to tilt. So I have to use two 35 pound sandbags to be able to make this setup work for me. I just realized I've ripped apart my whole stand for this video, and now I have to put it all back together. But basically, that is the entire setup, and that's how I've built out my one stand design. Now, I'll put a link down below in the description to a kit that has every piece that is on this, every piece of gear, every piece of hardware, everything, just so that you could see all the components that I use to build out my stand. And then you could figure out if there's different components that will work for you. But you know, for $200, this stand isn't perfect, but it does get you in the right direction to have a one stand setup. And you know, before this, I had like four or five stands floating around and it just became a jungle of stands and cables and it was just a big mess. So having this one stand system makes it a lot more minimal in my office. And if you haven't seen the full breakdown of my office, I'll put a link to that right here and you can see how this one stand design is incorporated into my full editing suite. All right guys, that's it. I'll see you over there.